Hey friends, welcome to the part 72. So we are trying to crack real certification questions on AWS Cloud Practitioner. All of the parts in this playlist is valid till date. If you have not yet subscribed, this is your opportunity to subscribe. Plus you can also become a member. A Cloud Kernel member will help you gain access to some additional questions, which are very important to clear the certifications. Without much further delay, let's jump into the questions. The scenario explained here, it happens in the real life as well. Many times looking at the S3 bucket, it is very difficult to understand if, if this has been shared with an external entity. And the same happens with IAM roles as well. So for example, you just see a bucket, okay? A bucket in S3 and looking at that, now you have to make a call as, as to is it being shared? If yes, with whom and so on. Now the question asks you is like out of these four options, options A, B, C and D, which ones will help you identify if it has been shared or not? So if you look at option A, that is service catalog. So the service catalog, it deals with management or organization of infrastructure as a code templates. If you see this diagram, you got AWS Cloud Formation templates, Terraform configurations, and then you got service catalog here. If you want to create an infrastructure using a code, you can do that creating Cloud Formation templates. So the service catalog in this case will not help you with understanding with whom did you share this bucket. You know what? This question is very similar to the questions nowadays youtubers or tiktokers keep asking what is your body count how do you know your body count will people will not share their body count so they, they just keep going and saying that are you brave enough to share your body count and so on so here you want to know your bucket who is it being shared with simple now if you look at option b that is systems manager systems manager is the operations hub for aws applications so if you have a hybrid cloud system for example you have AWS web services as well as on-premises servers, then you can use systems manager. It will not help you with identifying the shared entities. Options D, organizations. The AWS organization is an account management service. It helps you to enable to consolidate multiple AWS accounts. So basically in an organization, if a finance department has an account, HR has an account, IT has an account, so you can you know, bring everything into one platform so that you can do a very efficient account management using AWS organizations. A very different purpose. It will not help you with this use case. So if you look at IAM Access Analyzer, it helps you identify resources in your organization and accounts that are shared with an external entity. This is just one of the capabilities, but you can pause this video and read the following two points as well. So you can pause this video here and also have a detailed read on the shared with external entity functionalities. So option C would be my final answer. Now let us jump into the next question. So this is again a question which is testing your knowledge on the well-architected framework. So viewers, the company wants to just pay for the resources it is using. It also wants the flexibility of increasing or decreasing its resource usage to meet the business needs. Which pillar of the well-architected framework are we referring to? We are all talking about cost. We have a pillar called cost optimization. This focuses on avoiding unnecessary costs. And hence, cost optimization would be my final answer. This is again a question which is testing your well-architected framework knowledge. The company wants to launch its workload on AWS. So nowadays it is imperative for uh, companies. They all have to go on cloud platforms. It may be a hybrid cloud solution, it may be a fully cloudized solution, or it may be a multi-cloud solution. Irrespective of the model, they have to leverage cloud platforms so this company is doing that and it requires the system to automatically recover from failures 
suppose you are a day trader or in the stock market and you fail and now you want a system which will automatically recover from failure that means in the stock market when do you fail when you incur losses and if there is a system which will help you recover those losses won't you want that option you would die to get that option right so in the cloud world you know if you fail there is a recovery automated recovery possible and when we talk about that we are not talking about cost optimization because we are not dealing with uh, we are not dealing with the cost pressures okay you don't have your father telling save my money buddy b is talking about operational excellence which refers to this portion of the documentation it focuses on running and monitoring systems and continually improving the processes we are not talking about process improvement here and that is why b is wrong okay then c talks about performance efficiency which is like it focuses on structured and streamlined allocation of it and compute resources that means we have to be efficient when we talk about efficient what it means is for example if you have uh, ten thousand dollars so you can you know allocate it efficiently so that all your needs are met all your entertainment expenses are met and still you have some cash in hand so that's an efficient allocation so this we are talking about performance efficiency that means when you as a user who uh, who uh, is having a lazy day and you are on netflix for four hours straight the netflix should still perform at its peak it should be efficient so that's the performance pillar okay here we are not talking about performance we are talking about recovery from failure okay then we are left with just one option that is reliability if you zero in on this piece of the documentation so it exactly does what the question asks is the workloads perform the internet functions and they recover quickly from failure to meet the demands this my friend is exactly what this question is looking for and hence option d would be my final answer if you have not yet subscribed this is your opportunity to do so so many people have cleared their aws azure google cloud certifications using the content on this channel needless to say there is also an opportunity to become a cloud kernel member you can use the link in the description to become a cloud kernel member and it has provisions to give you access to some additional important questions the way this channel is structured is you got to use both the free content as well as the paid content in order to pump up your chances of clearing the certification this is the youtube handle you can look for playlist tons of playlists tons of videos lots of shots keep upgrading your skills stay focused and keep learning